Today we will go on a wildlife safari together with Anacon, who lives in this area. The woods that we are in are full of wild boars. I hope we get to see some. But the wild boars are quite dangerous, so we brought guns along for protection, in case they get aggressive. I will also visit one of Smoland's world-famous glassworks and try to cook in their oven. Today I will serve a quick lunch in the forest over an open fire with some sausages, Danish sauce and some nice bread and then a nice casserole with wine boar. for more than 200 years. But ever since a few farmed wild boars escaped 30 years ago, it's back in the Swedish woods and this time probably for good because they are spreading like wildfire. Okay, so the lunch I'm going to prepare is, it's very easy. It is sausage with bacon cheese. The Danish sauce that I told you about before is a sauce with sour cream, mayonnaise, curry and chopped pickles. And then a very nice bread. This bread is often called scout bread because it's very convenient to bring with you in the forest. You can just have all the dry ingredients in a plastic bag. I'm going to show you. Here, here we have flour, baking powder and salt. And then I'm just going to mix it with butter and water and then it's done. Here we have the sausage. Here I am kneeling, getting dirty, but I like it. I like this kind of cooking. It's very basic. Butter and water, I got it here. So we start with the scout bread. The flour, it's an ordinary white flour. Butter, the recipe is very easy. It is almost two cups of white flour one tablespoon of salt, two tablespoons of baking powder, three and a half tablespoons of butter, and a half cup of water. I start to mix the butter and the dry ingredients before I add the water. I hope the wild boars are also eating lunch right now, so they won't be tempted to have me as a snack or something. <laughs> okay, so now just mix everything together until we have a perfect dough consistency. If you think it's too grainy, you can just add some more water. Divide the dough into seven pieces. 
And the red hunter always carries knife. Roll it into sausage shape, maybe a little longer. Hey! What do you that? Some sharp sticks, that's perfect. Now I think I need some assistance, so Anna Karen, she has to help me out here. Okay, so now we take the sausage, some cheese, roll on the cheese. some bacon and the scout bread. Just wind it around the sausage. I think that's enough. The Danish sauce, well you know the ingredients by now. Two spoons of sour cream mayonnaise, one large tablespoon, chopped pickles, two tablespoons, curry and salt. And the Danish, they just love this sauce. They eat it to almost everything. Meat, fish, well, almost everything. Okay, so now we just grill the sausage. Mm. We don't want it to, to burn, so just keep a good distance from the embers of fire. Okay, so while my guest is doing all the work here, I'm going to take a nice cup of hot chocolate. No, I'm going to do that. I'm going to serve Anna calling some hot chocolate. I'm not rude. A large old wild boar can reach up to 400 pounds. But if you're planning on eating wild boar, you'd better avoid the older ones. Larger boars produce the hormone adrosterone, which builds up in their fat and gives the meat a strong odor. She told me that when they are cornered, they can be quite dangerous. So I just stay behind you for now. Smoland is best known for its huge tracts of forest, lakes, and the vast number farmers who emigrated to the U.S. in the 19th century. In this province you'll also find one of Sweden's most important export industries, the Glass Kingdom. A total of 16 glassworks scattered amongst the forests. Småland is known in Swedish history as the province that was most affected by the mass immigration to America some hundred years ago. A 
Among the millions of Swedes who emigrated to North America during the second half of the 19th century, every fifth person came from this region. And what you see here behind me is what every homesick Swede was longing for, the Swedish farm. And this farm here is the most famous one, Duvemola. with wild boar and pickled vegetables that is on the menu but I'm going to call the stew for it's more like a casserole a casserole is a stew with beans and casserole is a French word it's nicer here is the meat the wild boar the difference between wild boar and an ordinary pig is well you can see that the flesh is much darker and the taste it has a gamey pork taste and that that is very delicious I like it a lot I'm going to start to cut the meat into big chunks all kind of stews or casseroles they need time to simmer and you don't want the meat to break up so it's better if the cubes are bigger. And sometimes when, when I go to the store, I see those packaged with stew prepared meat and they are always in this size and I think it's too small. I don't like it. So it's better if you buy a piece of meat and you cut it yourself. And another advice, I have so much inf information for you, but another advice is that when you see the meat, meat and it, it's in the package, if there is any blood in the package, that is a sign that the meat isn't tender enough because a tender meat keeps all its liquid. Very important. So, cut the meat. Frying pan on the stove. Some butter and oil. And you know that it's very important that the frying pan is really, really hot, especially when it's snowing. <laughs> the meat goes in the frying pan. Season with salt and pepper. I really don't like the snow here. <laughs> getting my frying pan quite cold. Well, I need more than wild boar to my casserole. I need carrot, parsley root, garlic, onion, lentils, smoked bacon and bay leaf. We're going to cut the carrots into chunks. Just do it roughly, it's enough. The meat goes in the pot and in goes the vegetables. cinnamon and I think if you fry the cinnamon just for a couple of minutes then you will have a stronger cinnamon taste the garlic just slice it thinly smoked bacon it was quite amazing that we actually got to see wild boars today it is really new experience for me I worked a lot with wild boar meat as a chef, but to see it live was a completely different thing. And it seemed rather exotic maybe to you, but I have to confess that it is very exotic for me as well. Because it, okay, if you're a hunter and you live in the south part of Sweden, yes, then it's very common that you have your own wild boar meat in your freezer. But otherwise, no, it's very hard to get. 
even for the restaurant. The vegetables goes in the pot. Now what we need is lentils and bay leaf. And lentils is great to use in all kinds of stews or casserole because they're just loaded with all kinds of vitamins, iron, fiber. They're very healthy. So we just add the lentils. Three bay leaf and water. Put the lid on and now of course you can just leave the pot on the stove and leave it to simmer for one, one and a half hour. Then taste the meat and when the meat is so tender that it just falls apart in your mouth, then it's done. But I'm going to prepare my casserole in a different way. I'm going to use an oven and I don't have an oven right here so I have to go and find one. better place to find a powerful oven than a glasswork. With my casserole I will serve pickled vegetables and for that I need a bowl of course and I think I'd be a bit crafty here. After all necessity is the mother of invention. For centuries, Småland has been the center of some of the most famous glassworks in the world. And the tools used are essentially the same today as they always have been since the handicraft was introduced in Sweden. on the pole because when the glass comes out it, it is tremendously hot and it has a consistency almost like maple syrup so keep the glass on the pole spin the pole and blow at the same time that is a huge challenge Here it is. I'm going to give it to my mom. They just love all these kinds of stuff. So now let's move on to my pickled vegetables. I'm going to start to divide the carrot and the parsnip into coins. Just slice it, cut the parsnips into coins as well. The onion. The cauliflower, we just divide into smaller pieces. We're going to start to boil everything except the cauliflower. And then we add the cauliflower in the end. We don't want it to be mushy. I'm just going to season the water up with salt and pepper. And don't be afraid of using salt and pepper. In the meantime, while my vegetables are boiling, I'm going to prepare my marinade. And this is a very simple marinade that I use a lot. Sugar, two parts of sugar, one part of vinegar, and I'm going to spice my marinade with some anise seed. Bring it to boil. We're almost done. Mm. 
Now my vegetables have boiled here for five minutes, so now it's time to add the cauliflower. I'm going to use one apple in my pickled vegetables. It is so nice with that apple consistency, which is very crunchy. But I'm going to add the apple just before serving, but I cut it now in small pieces, so it's a good mise en place. Just drain the vegetables. Okay, the apples. Put everything in the incredible beautiful bowl. <laughs> the hot marinade, pour it over the vegetables and leave it to cool down. My pickles are done and this is so tasty to the wild boar. By the way, I have to go and check on the wild boar stew and see if it's done. Let's see how my casserole is doing. More salt and pepper. Pepper. 